What's good guys, Zenos here and today in this video of Kingdom of Heroes Tactics War, I'm going to recommend you guys the top 10 4 star at hero units in this game which is going to make your gameplay progression much easier compared to other hero units out there. So now let's get this started. By the second day, you will be able to get this 4 star hero select summon chest. So from here, you can select the 4 star at hero unit of your choice right off the bat. So the question is, which first standard hero to select well it actually does depends on what certain hero do you want what certain role is still missing in your team like let's say is it going to be a tank is it going to be a dps hero unit or is it going to be a healer it really depends on you uh, most of the players they have actually gone with the rare because he is one of the really awesome healer out there they really do think that rare is one of the best or let's say the best first standard healer out there and they also think that like healer is what they are still lacking so in the usual case or the in the usual scenario rare is the first pick right of the bat so let's start talking about the Rhea, who is our the first unit right over here, guys. Rhea can actually heal a lot of HP on the single target right over here with her second active skill. With her first active skill, she can improve the mobility of the alloy as well. And that's really good indeed. And guess what, guys? With her third skill, she can grant debuff immunity, which is totally cool, especially for the PvP continents, uh, let alone the PvE continents, and also provide a shield of 30% of max SP to the target ally for two turns. That is damn amazing. I just really like that. Whether it be the PvP or the PvE continent, it's uh, just amazing, amazing skill. So she really does pack a lot of punch when it comes to providing a really good healing, as well as the utility to the team. So, well, guys, Rhea is out there as a really good unit that you can pick up right of the bat and never regret at all and the next unit that you would also love to uh, give some of the attention is going to be Penelope which I think is a little bit better in my opinion which is like one of the, my most recommended hero unit out there because not only that she can heal the allies but also provide a lot of utilities that could just blow your mind away just look at that guys successful hits have 50% chance to remove one buff from the target see can remove the buff from the target and guess what guys if she is successful at removing the buff her pray for victory is a skill that is gonna be this one right over here uh, the skill cooldown will decrease by one turn which definitely is gonna be really great why because her pray for victory her third active skill recovers 40% HP of a target ally increases their attack for three turns which is definitely damn amazing guys having any kind of buff right out there which could improve your overall DPS output is a must whether it be the PvE or the PvP content okay because the more damage you can deal the better it is uh, the best offense is the best defense in my opinion guys so uh, Penelope is my hero to go okay if you really want a really good healer plus a really good utility unit I think she is the best out there and the second active skill is going to be the noble player i mean prayer it says recovers the action gauge of you and surrounding allies by 20 freaking percent oh my god this is a definitely must have skill that uh, you would want to spam in the pvp uh, content okay in the arena this is definitely going to give you a really great edge against your opponents having an extra action gauge right over there laying around is definitely going to help you guys to be more faster than your opponents and being able to cast uh, debuffs or let's say the attack damages on the opponents before they they could even uh, start their turn is definitely a something really good advantage that you want to have on your hand okay that is really cool indeed and grants increased defense for two turns <laughs> just look at that what does she not have okay she can improve the attack of the alloy she can improve the defense and she can improve the action gauge as well that is something that you would definitely want to have in your team guys and being able to uh, get some really good healing from her really makes her a very essential unit that you must have okay so there we go guys increases all allies defense in the dungeon battle by 36 percent which is pretty decent i mean like if you are looking forward for some really good defense stats definitely you can go with it uh especially with those kind of hero units who actually skills the damage based on their defense stats as well yes there are certain heroes that deals more damage if they have more defense so in that case penelope is going to be a really great choice indeed how about the next unit that's going to be the eblis yes the third unit this girl can really deal some amazing amount of damage i really do like her guys i mean like just look at that she has a 30 percent chance to block hp recovery of the target for two turns yes it can be very very helpful in certain conditions where the opponent is just healing themselves up over and over again especially you know like the boss units like right uh in that case when they are just healing themselves up really fast uh, then 
it can be a really big problem indeed. I mean, like, you will be working your ass off to get rid of even a small amount of their HP, and if they just recover it back up, that can be quite painful, all right? And so it's a little bit conditional, but can be really, really helpful indeed, uh, you know, like, at certain conditions, okay? So there we go. Second active skill is going to be the test of corruption. Wow, seduces a target enemy. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Man, why are you? All right, provoking the target for one turn and reducing its speed for two turns. Definitely a good thing to have around, especially for the PvP content. Being able to provoke the target is definitely going to disrupt the battle strategy or the momentum of the opponents. And being able to reduce their speed as well, it's quite really strategic if you have that in your hands. So definitely a good thing to spam on the PvP content. And the next thing is going to be the third active skill. That's going to be the assassinate actives. And I like attacks a target enemy off guard. <laughs> All right, successful hits make the attack a guaranteed crit hit. What more do you want? All right, if the hit is a guaranteed crit hit, that means you can totally focus on the critical damages so that your damage output is going to be really, really, really insane. Okay, and that is definitely going to be really helpful in order to make your DPS output very, very reliable and very. Um, powerful. If the target is killed with assassinate, you gain an excellent opportunity. Oh my, just look at that, guys. That is amazing. I mean, like, you get that action opportunity right away. That is really cool. Meaning, like, uh, if you really are looking for it for some really good DPS output, this Eblis can really help you a lot. The next thing is going to be the passive effect, the Testa. At the start of turn, Iblis reduces the defense of the enemy with the lowest HP for one turn. That is definitely awesome, guys. Because this effect right over here, which is the death reduction, really does improve your damage output against that opponent. And that is going to be really cool indeed. I mean, like, both for the PvP as well as the PvE content, because it's a passive effect. It's not even an active effect, okay? I'm mean, like having a defense decrease on the opponents right over there in the nearby... And circumference definitely is going to help you guys to maximize your damage output and get rid of a certain opponent right off the bat very easily as soon as possible. And that's really cool, guys. I like Iblis. She is really a good damage dealer. How about the next damage dealer, de damage dealer? That's going to be Lucifer. Well, this guy is pretty cool indeed as well. Uh, well, what he is going to do is he has a 30% chance to reduce the speed of the enemy's hit for one turn. That is cool. Uh, being able to slow down the opponents is definitely a cool thing to have around, especially when it comes to like PvE contents, okay? And the next thing is going to be this kick right up here that has a 55% chance to stun the target for one turn and push them back for one tile. That can be quite strategic indeed and having a stun around is quite awesome most of the time when it comes to PvP content because being able to manipulate your opponent or let's say disrupt their battle momentum is very very crucial indeed when it comes to the PvP content all right and next thing is going to be his third active skill that is disabling area successfully hits uh, have a 60% chance to increase the glossing rate of the enemy's hit for three turns that is really cool guys it has quite a wide target area as well just look at that man that is really cool indeed and guess what guys those uh, enemies affected with those glancing rate are actually going to deal less damage to you guys later on all right glancing hits inflict 30 percent less damage plus extra reduction when the enemy's uh, element uh, is at disadvantage against your element so there we go guys all right in the long run definitely it's going to help you guys in making a little bit of more durability or sustainability type of option right over there <laughs> so there we go and the next thing is going to be his passive. That's the Fallen Angel. Successful hits by Lucifer inflicts continuous damage on enemies hit for one turn. Definitely something that you want to spam against the boss units, okay? Continuous damage is going to really help you guys to make sure that even the high HP boss units will fall down really quickly, okay? So that is it, guys. All you need to provide him is quite a really good sustainability and the endurance. That's what his disabling area is going to allow him to achieve, okay? So pretty cool unit and definitely you want to spam him against the boss units. I would not say that he's definitely an amazing unit for the PvP content, but for the PvE content, he's quite... Uh, quite a quite a good lad okay next unit is going to be the bird anti wow i'm like she's unforgiving she can really deal some amazing damage okay now let's see why first of all guys successful crit hits increases your attack for one turn that is definitely amazing as a dps hero unit to have the attack boost is quite awesome right of the band and for every enemy killed confident gale's cooldown is reduced by one turn okay and that is really cool guys and now what is the confident gale really about 
pierces through the enemy to attack, successfully hit, grants you invincibility for one turn. Invincibility is just really, really cool. You will not be receiving any kind of damage for that one turn, which is like, damn, amazing, isn't it? This skill's damage increases when you have more active buffs. So more active buff you have, the more damage you are going to deal. And guess what, guys? If the target is killed by this skill, this skill cooldown will be reset right away. You will be able to use this skill right off the bat again in the next turn. That is just too damn amazing. This damage can really pack a lot of punch and being able to use this skill repetitively makes her very, very powerful and indeed. I'm like, she's quite fatal to her opponents, okay? So that is it, guys. And what about her passive effect? That's gonna be Serenity. Successful hits by Verdandi removes one buff from the target's head. Okay, so there we go, guys. That is really cool, uh, especially if there are certain type of irritating buff that is on the opponent and you just want to get rid of that right away because it's really irritating you guys because maybe that could be Risen, that could be attack buff, defense buff, and so many other things. Being able to remove them by the passive effect it's just cool it's a passive effect okay not even an active effect and the next thing is going to be the protection of Yggdrasil guess what guys she actually provides invincibility to herself right but if she already has invincibility what's going to happen is that at the end of turn you are going to recover three percent of max HP which is definitely damn amazing I mean like she has a really good sustenance on herself she is going to provide a really good uh, endurance to herself but thanks to that invincibility and guess what guys being able to deal a lot more damage as well is something that you would not really want to miss out bird anti can be a very very fatal hero unit out there against your opponent teams okay so that is it guys verdanti really cool i'm like she's quite a decent waifu uh, as well <laughs> isn't she next unit is going to be helena okay i like this girl this girl is superb okay this guy is i mean like this girl is a tank and definitely if you are lacking a tank she is one of the really right on to go unit okay i mean like you would really want to have a right of the bat on your team uh because she just can really tank a lot of damage by herself okay so uh besides the ingwe uh she can actually deal i mean like she can actually block a lot of damage right over there anyways let's look into her skills setups First active skill is saying Moonlight Blade. Attacks enemy within an uh, target area. Successful hits have 30% chance to provoke enemies hit for one turn. And you might be asking, okay, what is the advantage of provoke? It says right over here, provoke targets attack the provoker, not the other hero units. Meaning like you have a very good chance to save your squishy hero units or squishy allies, okay? Your squishy, your squishy allies have really good chance to get themselves saved from those incoming high nuke damages, which I think Helena can really take just like that okay uh, she can really defend a lot of damage incoming against her so there we go guys her second active skill is known as the heart chaser well what it does that successful hits reduce the ex targets action gauge by 10 percent definitely something that you want to spam in the pvp content i mean like being able to decrease their action gauge makes them really slow indeed and makes the attack a guaranteed crit hit and you might be asking well she's a tank and <laughs> what does this really have to do well Hear it out. The skill's damage increases when you have the greater defense. Think about it. I mean, like, the more defense he has, the more effective she becomes because he's a tank unit, right? And on top of that one, if she is actually going to land that critical damage, and with that increased critical damage with a lot of defense stats right over there, she's going to deal some amazing damage as well while blocking a lot of damage on the same time. This is quite an amazing combo in it. I would really love to have her in my team. I would definitely be happy to get her, okay? This is quite good. I mean, like, if I don't have Ingwe, I would definitely go with Helena. If the target is stunned, you inflict additional damage as well. Just think about it. Guess what, guys? She can stun with the third active skill. Wow. See that, guys? Successful hits have 70 freaking percent chance to stun the target for one turn. 70 percent is quite a really good RNG, guys. Really good RNG. And guess what, guys? The effect chance can be improved if you can improve her skill uh, you know like uh, grade okay so there we go guys additional 30% accuracy is applied to the attack what what <laughs> man she is really after stunning the opponents like she really wants to make sure that the opponent is stunned what a good idea right over there guys that's really cool 
And successful stuns increase your defense for two turns. And being a tank unit, having uh, like that defense buff is definitely a worth it buff to have, okay? And that is really cool, guys. Chance detection, it says, every successful hit by Helena has a 70% chance to grant her with continuous recovery for one turn. Wow, that's cool, guys. I mean, like, she has a really good sustenance. She can really bash up some really good amount of damage to the opponents and being able to stun the opponents. Wow. Such a really good combination combination is definitely good for PvP continents for the arena whereas for the PvE continents she is quite great at that content as well but uh, I think she has more leaning or more tilting towards the PvP content okay I would definitely love to have Elena around man she's quite an amazing unit next unit is going to be the Sandal Fawn okay <laughs> all right all right Sandal Fawn all right what kind of name is that anyway she actually scales in damage output okay a lot of dps right over there successful hits have 55 percent chance to reduce the attack of the enemy's hit for one turn being able to decrease the attack of the opponents definitely will improve your sustainability because the opponents will not be able to deal a lot of damage right i mean like you can actually target this attack on such kind of opponents who all who actually boast to have very good attack stats or let's say they can really deal some amazing damage to you guys in the next turn you can just minimize the damage output and keep yourself alive the second active skill is going to be judgment well what it does that like it back it knocks the opponent back one tile successful hits have 50 percent chance to stun the target for one turn that is like really cool having stun is always a good thing to to have around especially in this kind of games <laughs> stun is a must okay it actually really allows you to just control the gameplay uh, much better and having a great and like a good edge against your opponents, especially in the PvP contents. Successful stunts reduce the battle of uh, rats cooldown by one turn. That is really cool. I mean, like any kind of skill that will allow you to use your ultimate skill or better skills as soon as possible, it's always a great thing to have around. And let's see what the Blade of Wrath really does. Her main ultimate nuke right over here, guys. It says, throws down a spear to bring down lightning to attack enemies within the target area. Meaning, like, it's an AoE attack. Just look at that, guys. Multiple opponents will be hit by thanks to this AoE attack. Successful hits makes the target, uh, I mean, like, the attack a guaranteed crit hit. Meaning, like, you can really focus on building up a lot of critical damage. And with that thing being around, she can really scale up the damage really nicely. Well, that makes her really amazing unit for the PvE contents. If you really want to fight against the boss units, man, those critical damages are going to be of really great help indeed. And in the PvP content as well, meaning like if you can just make sure that your critical damage is going to land on the opponents, it's like pretty much most of the time if you build her quite fat, she is going to make sure that the opponents stay down, <laughs> okay? They are going to be knocked out in just one single strike. Damn, that's cool. Every enemy killed by this skill applies a stack of continuous recovery for one turn. Well, that is quite good for her to have some sustenance. There we go. And her uh, passive effect is going to be Lacrimosa. <laughs> oh, man, just look at that. If there is at least one alloy alive with Sandal Phone, okay, just one ally alive, okay? See, and anyone ally, or maybe all allies. See, gains increased attack for one turn. That is definitely awesome. Passively, she is going to apply that attack boost to herself and that means her damage is going to be freaking insane, okay? I mean like, just look at it. Attack boost plus guaranteed crit hit. Just think how much damage she can apply. And guess what guys, her damage is an AoE attack as well. That means she will have easier time in just destroying the opponents one by one guys and its cooldown is only three turns and top of that one if you keep on improving this skill up the uh, cooldown will be reduced reduced by one turn further that means only two turn cooldown meaning like you can spam this skill very frequently guys and on top of that one guys a second active skill also allows her to reduce the cooldown of her main active skill okay main third you know like male ultimate skill and that just makes it a really good recipe right out there i mean like sandal phone <laughs> This is pretty fast and effective, if you have to ask me, okay? And what if Sandal Phone is the only one alive? She gains increased defense instead of the attack at the end of the turn, meaning like she will at least, uh, you know, like, uh, strive to stay longer in the battle so that maybe she might actually be able to turn out the battles, okay? Having an extra defense meaning like she will be able to tank out some more damage, okay? That is it. Which I think is not really going to be quite viable because she is really more into offense rather than defense. Okay, so there we go. I mean like her defense stats are not really that impressive in my opinion. 
<laughs> so having any kind of like extra defense is like all right i'm mean like not really that superb in my opinion i would say just keep it up to the increased offense or attack stats okay and now next unit is going to be valkyrie okay wow i mean like she is a goddess <laughs> oh well she is but uh, she is mainly for the you know like the boss stages why well let's look into here right over here heavenly boy says her first active skill What's going to happen is that like she's going to attack a single target, successful hits, inflict continuous damage on the target for one turn if the target is afflicted by a debuff, okay? And successful crit hit reduces the cooldown of Reaper by one turn. And that Reaper is going to be your second active skill that can deal some amazing damage, guys. Just think about it. Additional 20% accuracy is applied to this attack and she is going to deal the damage on the aoe basis just look at that uh, up to four enemies at a time and successful crit hit inflicts continuous damage on the enemy hit for two turns the continuous damage seems to be quite in nature to her that means that she is going to be a definitely good unit against the boss units okay so if you're going to fight against the boss units or the boss stages bring the valkyrie around <laughs> she will be out there to deal some really good dot skills all right and the Passive skill, Seal of the Glory. What it says that at the start of turn, Valkyrie increases the attack of the ally with the lowest HP percentage for one turn, possibly herself. Okay, because she is a DPS unit, definitely her HP is not going to be that impressive, is it? <laughs> okay, if Valkyrie is below 70% HP, what's going to happen is that Reaper's cooldown is reduced by one turn. Wow, just look at that, man. That is really cool. <laughs> wow, I mean, like, she will be able to, you know, like, access this reaper her second active skill over and over again okay so try to max out her second active skill as soon as possible so that you can keep on dealing a lot of dps against the opponents all right that is it and her little skill is quite amazing as well if you have the water attribute team that means she is going to increase all ally speed by up to 16 percent which is definitely damn amazing i just really like that 16 percent speed boost is something that you should really consider guys because in pvp content man speed boost is going to be the prime factor to actually dictate that how good you will be able to set up all the attacks and you know uh, damages on the opponents, okay? Uh, your strategies are gonna be quite successful if you have a lot of speed stats by your side. I think, I mean, like, if you are already an Epic 7 player, or let's say the Summer Swap player, I think you already know that what speed stats really do mean in this kind of games, okay? So that is it. And the ninth unit is going to be Thea. Okay, this girl, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like it. I'm like, hands down, she's good. Okay, why? First of all, <laughs> she works in a very unique way, okay? So what is it is that First active skill is known as the Deadly Toxin. Fires a lethal toxin at a target enemy and inflicts continuous damage on yourself for four turns. It's like, what the hell, man? She actually inflicts continuous damage on herself? And for four turns? That is not fair. But hold on a minute, guys. Hold on a minute. How about the second active skill? Contagious Toxins, okay? So what's going to happen is that she's going to attack the opponents at a wide area. All right, it's a every type of attack and additionally she's going to transfer all of her debuffs to the enemy's hit think about it i mean like with her first active skill she's going to apply that four turn continuous damage which is a long period of continuous damage okay right off the bat right over there and if she can actually apply that continuous damage to multiple opponents at a certain target area that is quite good enough i like this i like this okay she's just going to transfer and if she has any kind of additional debuff she's going to transfer those things as well that's really cool this skills uh, damage increases when you have more active debuffs i mean like think about it the more debuffs she has the more damage she's going to deal and the more debuffs she is going to apply in the opponents as well and that is really amazing a uh, passive effect is going to be the mysterious pedigree. Oh man, <laughs> a pedigree! I need my doggy. Thea recovers five percent of max SP at the start of turn. So there we go, guys. That is one way to counter those continuous damage inflicting on herself. Okay, so you might be uh, thinking like, "Oh my God, she's going to keep on hurting herself." But thanks to a passive skill effect, she's just going to maintain her SP. All right, and that is really cool. And her little skill is 
pretty cool. Increases all allies' attack with three attribute by 29%. So if they are really cool uh, three attribute allies in your team, definitely they are going to have their DPS boosted quite uh, nicely. And that is cool. I mean, like her leadership skill can be improved as well. Okay, just look at these upgrades right here, guys. And I really like that. Okay, Thea is definitely someone that you would want to really use in the PvE contents. Whereas for the PvP content, I would say like uh, depends, man. I would not say that like she's super effective for the PvP contents though. But I mean like if you have her, why not use her, okay? <laughs> and let me know. <laughs> man, I would not say like she's really great for PvP contents, but being able to provide that continuous damage to the multiple opponents at a single time could be quite helpful, I guess. And being able to transfer all those debuffs to the opponents, man, just think about it. If she has that defense down debuff on her, she's going to um, apply to that four opponents on the other side. Wow, I mean, like, that could be cool, isn't it? <laughs> All right, depending upon the situation, she can be very, very, very helpful, okay? And now the final unit, the 10th unit that I would really love to put your, or let's say, attract your attention to is going to be Muspel. This guy is uh, crazy good. <laughs> I like him, I like him. This is one of my selected, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like, favorite choice, okay? So first active skill is going to be the fireball. Attacks that target uh, enemy with fire f flames. Uh, successful crit hit reduces the mind's focus cooldown by one turn. Uh, his second active skill, okay? If the target is killed with his first active skill, what's going to happen is that mind focus cooldown is reset right away. Meaning like you will be able to use the mind mind's uh you know like focus right up the bat now what is so special with the mind focus well focus is to collect energy resetting inferno's cooldown inferno is going to be his massive ultimate attack okay and guess what guys additionally your attack is increased for one turn which is like what man that's cool i like that more dps output potential and on top of that one you gain an action opportunity right away Man, think about it. You'll be able to get your another turn right off the bat and being able to use his Inferno is just quite amazing. Think about it. Inferno attacks the enemy with a target area with the powerful flame with increased critical damage. Think about it. He already has that attack boost thanks to his mind focus, right? And with Inferno, he's actually going to have that additional critical damage inflicted on the opponents. The damage scaling is quite impressive right up here, guys. And guess what, guys? The targeting area is really huge as well. He can deal damage to up to how many units over there? Like eight units? Think about it. Eight units, man. Or eight, what, eight, eight, right, or seven, 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 sorry, seven units, all right. So there we go, guys. That's cool. That's really cool. The skills damage increases when you have more active buffs. The more active buff he has, the more damage is going to deal. Just think about it, man. If you can really set up him pretty right, think about it. He already has the attack buff, all right, and he's going to uh, inflict that additional critical damage on the opponents, and he has a lot of buff on himself. The damage can be really huge, and he's going to deal that AoE damage as well. Oh my god, okay, and thanks to his first active skill and the second active skill synergy, he's going to able to, you know, like, access his third active skill, or let's say his ultimate skill, over and over and over again, which is just going to make your gameplay progression much faster indeed. So Muspel, don't really sleep out on him. He's a definite amazing unit indeed, all right? And finally, his literal skill right over here is that he increases all allies attack by 30%. All freaking allies! Oh my god! Just think about it, man! <laughs> it's not a specific element. Increases all allies attack by 30%. Man, the effect is meant even if the leader has fallen. This is by far one of the best leadership skill right of the band as a first and at hero unit. All you need to do is awaken him, okay? So Muspel is a definite must-have unit if you really want to make sure that your DPS output is going to be really surreal, okay? Anyways, this is it. Uh, I mean, like, these are the heroes that I really do recommend you guys on picking up or, let's say, really think about when you really want to select them from this four-star select summon chest or when you actually summon them through your summonings, make sure them that you build them up really nicely and keep them around for better gaming performance, all right? So that is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to keep on enjoying the contents of my channel. See you guys in the next video.